In this video, I'm going to show you how to put together a 3D printed planetary gearbox and run it using the O-Drive S1 with a brushless motor. Let's get started. So this right here, this is what we call the planet gear. So we have three planet gears and this part, this is the carrier. So the carrier is the part that's going to hold the planet gears. So these planet gears will go in here like this. And you can see right here, my design, I'm not using any bearings. These are made out of nylon, so they actually can spin pretty well without any bearing. You can see some of them spin better than the other because of some of how the tolerance fits in these, but this is generally how it looks and it's spinning pretty smoothly with no bearing. Now this right here, this is the sun gear. So the sun gear is a gear that goes inside the middle. And this middle gear, once it's attached to this motor, which I'll put on in just a little bit, this is what's going to control the center rotation. So you can see when it rotates, it's going to look something like this. Of course, when the center piece is rotating later on, it's not actually going to move. It's going to be moving with the black piece because we're mounting it from the bottom. So we're going to do that in just a little bit. And this right here, this is the ring gear. So this ring gear, you can see there's the teeth on the outer end. Now, when I put the planet gears in, you can see that if I try to spin it, it's going to move like this. And this is what allows us to have a high gear ratio between the motor and the output because of how these gears are arranged. So as I was assembling this, I realized I made a stupid mistake. I wasn't supposed to mount this gear directly to this bottom uh, carrier. So what I'm going to do instead now is just to rely on the friction force of this piece to hold this gear relative to the shaft and then let this black piece spin freely. Okay, so after I put on the back piece, it's going to look like this fully assembled. I'm going to put the top part on last so that when I rotate this, you can actually see the gears move, which I'll show you in a little bit. But this part, this is where the encoder is going to go on here. So you can see we have this part mounted to the shaft and then what I'm going to do is just take this top part and then snap it in. So just align it and I'm going to push it down. So I went ahead and connected the cables for the encoders here. So you can see we have the pins here, B, 5 volt, A, X, and G. So these are all connected. It's going to be hooked up to my O drive here. So here I'm using the O drive S1. If you look at the pins here, you can see that we have our A, B, C. These three doesn't matter the order. And then in between we have the DC minus and DC plus. So that's going to my power supply there. And then we have everything hooked up here. So let's go ahead and start controlling this so we can see this actually move in action. Real quick, if you want to have your parts 3D printed but don't have access to a 3D printer, you want to make sure you check out PCBWay. They have a really easy system for you to get your parts printed. Just come up here to 3D printing. And once you come here, just drag in your part and choose the quantity, material, color, different threading options, and choose the final product description. Then go ahead and submit your part for review and it should be ready to go. Okay, so right here I'm running it in velocity mode. So I'm just going to go ahead and ramp up the speed a little bit. So I'm going to slowly ramp it up here. This is going at 0.28 revolutions per second. Now here you can see I sped it up a little bit more and you can see that it's working pretty well. Let's see if we could go a little bit faster than this. You can see that at higher speed it's also going pretty well. So. You can see that these are really special because I'm using nylon with nylon and it's actually doing very well. Okay, so now I'm going to try to run it in one direction and then reverse it in the other direction. So you can see that I could oscillate it back and forth and it's also responding pretty well. So that part is good. See how fast I could ramp it up in the other direction. Whoa. So you can see that at pretty high speeds, it's also pretty good. Let's see if we go a little bit faster, even faster. So, okay, it's going pretty well. So this is going at minus five revolutions per second. If we go a little bit up to six, okay, so it's pretty good. And let's go ahead and stop it. 
By the way, if you're new to the software side of robotics, make sure to check out my master AI and robotics bundle on my website where you get to learn ROS, OpenCV, computer vision using AI, Python, and C++. It's a great way to jumpstart your career in robotics software engineering. So go ahead and check it out on my website. It's going to be at kevinwoodrobotics.com. I'm going to leave a link in the video description, so go ahead and check it out. So now I went ahead and put the lid on, so this will be how this will actually work in practice. One of the screws didn't fit in too well, so I just secured two on. But let's go ahead and do a similar test. This time, let's go ahead and jump to position mode. So position mode, I'm just going to control it by oscillating back and forth. And you can see that it's going pretty well. I could take a slightly bigger step. Whoa, so that's pretty big. But I can also drag it like this, a similar behavior. I could jump it back to stepping in increments of 0 0.5 revolutions. So I could step it in either direction here. And because of the reduction ratio, we're going to see a decrease by about 5 to 1. So let me go back to velocity mode here. So I'm going to go ahead and activate it. And you can see it's running. So this is where you attach a link to the end of it if you wanted to, but let's go ahead and ramp it up slowly. So you can see there's a slight bit of oscillation here. So this tells me that um, something might be slightly off-centered here. So it might be some issue with the tolerancing probably. But you can see I could run it faster too. Yeah, so this is overall working pretty well. You can see the whole enclosure is pretty nice here. So I'm going to leave the link of the files down below if you want to check it out. So if you found this video helpful, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.